Hello, my name is Andrew Sprung. I write about the uh, Affordable Care Act and uh, health insurance and, and health uh, matters generally for healthinsurance.org, also for other publications including The Atlantic and The New Republic as well as on my blog, Ex Post Factoid. I'm here with Louise Norris, uh, also a writer for healthinsurance.org. Uh, Louise it takes a, brings a broker's perspective uh, to the discussion. She and her husband uh, have run a, uh, a health insurance brokerage in Colorado since uh, 2003. Uh, Louise has uh, been writing about health insurance uh, and healthcare issues since uh, 2006. She's the author of over 120 articles on the subject and also a, an ebook um, available free uh, on healthinsurance.org called The Insider's Guide to Obamacare's Open Enrollment. So we are here today um, to talk about a little known benefit that many buyers of private health insurance uh, in the Affordable Care Act marketplaces will be eligible for. Um, many people know that the government will help um, with a large part of the monthly premium for many buyers on the exchanges, most buyers on the exchanges, in fact. What's less known is that lower income buyers, um, for example, uh, a single person earning up to a little more than $29,000 a year or a family of four um, earning um, up to a little bit shy of $60,000 a year are also eligible for um, a second set of subsidies known as cost sharing reductions. Um, so I will uh, turn it over to Louise to explain uh, what those are and, uh, and how they help uh, plan buyers. Thank you, Andrew. Um, good to be here. So cost sharing reductions, um, as you mentioned, there are people who are you know, on the lower end of the income scale, but definitely into, I think, what people would consider the middle class for sure. Um, like you said, a family of four earning almost $60,000 a year is eligible for these uh, subsidies. And basically the way they work is the, if you select a silver plan in the exchange, if you're in that income range and you select a silver plan, you get, it's sort of a boosted up silver plan. You get, um, better benefits and there's there's two ways they they do that first of all your the average percentage of your costs that you have to pay um, right from the get-go is lower and also the total out-of-pocket that you would have to pay in the event of a, a serious claim is also lower um, the impact is very significant for people on the especially on the lower end of the income spectrum um, you know, if a single individual earning $17,000 a year can get a silver plan with a maximum out-of-pocket of, of um, $2,250 for the year and also have the plan cover an average of 94% of their costs before that out-of-pocket is met. So that's a dramatic improvement over, say for example, if they were to pick a bronze plan instead, their maximum out-of-pocket would be $6,600, um, significantly more than the $2,250, and their, their sh the person, the applicant's share of costs before that maximum out-of-pocket would be 40% instead of only 6%. So it's a, you know, you basically, you're getting, for the, for the price of a silver plan, you're getting, you know, a a plan that's comparable to a platinum plan or a plan that you would get through a really good employer plan um, without having to pay extra beyond what just a silver plan costs. So for people who, who qualify for these plans based on their income, it's just a way to get um, much better coverage um, with the government paying the health insurance company to, to increase your benefits. And to reduce reduce your out of pocket costs. Right. Uh, just, just to flesh that out a little more, if you look at silver plans on the exchange, if you were not eligible for these cost sharing reductions, uh, for an individual, the deductible might be typically maybe uh, anywhere from fifteen hundred to to three thousand um, dollars. 
uh, if you have the stronger um, cost sharing reduction at the lower end of the income scale that you were mentioning, it might be 200, the deductible might be $250. In, in some cases, it might even be $0. Right. Um, it might be $500. And the co-pays are similarly uh, much lower for, go, for an ER visit, for uh, going to a primary care physician, for going to a, a specialist. They'll all be on, on a lower scale, um, and they're likelier to kick in before the deductible uh, as well. Right. All of your expenses will... By selecting that plan, all of your expenses will be lower than than they would be if you didn't qualify for that plan and you just and you were on a silver plan. But they'll be dramatically lower than if because people who qualify for these cost sharing reduction plans, they can still choose to purchase a bronze plan, which will be have lower premiums each month. Um, of course, they're also eligible to purchase a gold or a platinum plan. But the silver plans, for people who are eligible for these cost-sharing reduction um, plans, the silver plans really stand out as a value because even though they cost a little bit more per month than a bronze plan, if you actually have to use your plan, if you have a medical issue where you need to go in and get treatment, you're going to pay a lot less, um, you know, both on a on a small scale and a large scale in terms of your maximum out of pocket if you were to have a serious issue everything's going to be reduced with those silver plans um, compared with the bronze plan so you might pay you know thirty forty fifty dollars a month more to have a silver plan as opposed to a bronze plan but you also have to think about it in terms of what you're going to end up paying if you need to use your plan and it's going to be significantly lower on these silver plans, um, especially, like I said, if your income is is on the lower end of that spectrum, pretty much any up to about twenty three thousand dollars in income for a single person, um, you it's it's a sig very significant um, reduction in out of pocket costs and just sort of day to day expenses for medical care um, if you select a silver plan as opposed to choosing a bronze plan. Right. Now you did mention uh, that a silver plan for an individual will typically be you know, maybe thirty, forty, fifty dollars a month more. Uh, the spread is likely to be larger if you're older. It's likely to be larger if there's more than one uh, person in the household. Um, doing that could potentially save you thousand dollars, thousands of dollars a year in actual medical costs if somebody goes to the hospital or if somebody has to have a series of tests or whatever. But give. Uh, it needs. Uh, I think we need to acknowledge that tens of dollars per month can be a, a a heavy lift. Tens of dollars per month more can be a heavy lift for somebody uh, with an income, say, under twenty thousand dollars. So uh, it needs uh, the the bronze plans can be tempting, even though they cover much less. So let's turn to um, let's turn to how good a job the the health exchanges do in um, making that trade-off clear to people. A good broker like yourself or a, uh, a navigator um, or a volunteer um, certified application counselor helping people uh, to sign up for insurance on the ACA exchanges will make the trade-offs clear. But what if you're going at it uh, on your own? Um, on our Colorado site, for example, what, uh, what kind of help would you get? Sure. Um, you know, I think that the the Colorado in Colorado here we have a state-run exchange, and um, you know they do a lot of things really well. But I think this particular area is something that could be done better. And we had 40% of the enrollees last year chose um, bronze plans, which is double the rate nationwide, where only about 20% of people chose bronze plans, and if you look at how the Colorado site handles this issue, I think it becomes clear why that might be. Basically, when you, if you are eligible for the cost sharing reduction plans, there's a little notice that pops up on the exchange site that just says, you know, you may be eligible for premium subsidies and cost sharing reduction subsidies, cost sharing reductions. And then it just continues on and shows you all your plans. And I mean, uh, I think a lot of people don't, when you say cost sharing reduction plans, I don't think a lot of people necessarily know what that means, so people might just skim over that and keep on going. 
And then the plans, the default is to show the plans based on premium with your cheapest plans first. So of course you're going to have several bronze plans pull up before you even see a silver plan. And in some cases the bronze plans are very inexpensive. I mean, you know, depending on your income, you can get bronze plans for you know a few dollars a month. Um, and the the closest silver plan might be, like I said, even for just one person, thirty or forty or fifty dollars more. So you'd have to scroll down to see it. And then when you do select a plan and you go to put it in your shopping cart and check out, there's no there's no warning or anything like that. If you if you're you know even if your income is just barely into the cost sharing reduction eligibility range, say your income is you know seventeen thousand dollars a year and you've selected a bronze plan, when there's these cost sharing reduction silver plans just a little bit further down the list, it doesn't notify you that you you know hey maybe you want to go back and double check this. Are you sure? There's nothing like that. Um, so you so I think further people, down the list. people do shop based on premium an, an awful lot, and I think that explains why Colorado had such a large percentage of people selecting bronze plans. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure it was a major part of it. Uh, to be fair to Colorado, it's a relatively wealthy state, and uh, on the whole, wealthier states tended to have more bronze buyers because bronze can make sense for somebody with a little bit more uh, financial resource. If they don't get much of a, if they're not eligible for cost sharing reduction, uh, they don't, and they don't get much much premium help, and they're reasonably healthy, uh, they then they may sort of roll the dice and try the bronze plan. Um, but for sure, it's it's one of the exchanges that um, that doesn't give you much help. And, and when you say it starts with, um, it shows you the cheapest plans first. Um, looking at the uh, at the Colorado shop around, there's really a sea of bronze. You have to scroll way down before you'd ever see a plan uh, before you get to the silver. Um, there's no particular demarcation, I don't think, between run between the metal levels unless you unless you just consciously choose to filter for that so it's easy to miss uh, healthcare.gov is not perfect but if you um, are eligible for CSR and you do try to buy a bronze bronze plan you get a pop-up warning that says um, that CSR is available with silver plans and not with the plans that you're buying it doesn't then jump you default you to look at silver plans. Uh, it doesn't actually even make it particularly clear that CSR comes only with silver. Silver is kind of thrown in there as an adjective and it's easy I think to miss. But there is something to think about. It's something to make you pause and think twice. Um, and as you said, um, the 36 states that were on healthcare.gov last year were fairly successful uh, in steering uh, people who are eligible for CSR uh, to silver. Uh, we don't know exactly what percentage of buyers were CSR eligible, but we knew, do know that 15 per, only 15 percent of buyers who were eligible for any kind of subsidy chose bronze. So that's a pretty good sign. Whereas again, uh, overall in Colorado, uh, 40 percent chose, chose bronze. And in fact, Colorado did break out numbers for people who are eligible for uh, cost sharing reduction. And among those eligible for the strongest, uh, only 80% chose silver. Uh, among those uh, with incomes under 200% of the poverty level, uh, which is still quite strong uh, cost-sharing reduction territory, uh, only 70% uh, chose silver. So that's that's really not good enough, and and not as good as the the federal standard and some other state exchanges. So, I guess our little message to Colorado is. Uh, is flag the CSR? Is it? Does that seem fair to say? Absolutely. And did you? Were there? Are there state-run exchanges that are doing, you know, a better job, or, you know, that I have think so. One one that stands out is uh, is Connecticut, which um, was widely regarded as having the most successful uh, exchange last year. The uh, the former CEO of the Connecticut exchange. Uh, was tapped to to now uh, head healthcare.gov. That's Kevin Cunahan, and uh, the the Connecticut exchange. If you qualify, if if you're eligible for CSR, if you're doing the shop around before you even sign up, uh, and you punch in your income and your family household size, it's just it really just takes 30 seconds on any shop around to do that. 
Uh, if you qualify for CSR, the first thing you see when you ask to see the plan results is a notice that tells you you qualified for CSR. And then when you scroll down, lo and behold, it's defaulted you to the silver plan selections. So you see those first, and you have to make a conscious effort to bounce out of that and uh, and see bronze uh, or other other metal levels. So you do see uh, loud and clear, so to speak, these nice large quotes with the premium, the deductible, the out-of-pocket uh, maximum that you have to spend in a year, um, and so it's it's more difficult to miss. And in fact, Connecticut is, is the second wealthiest state in the country, and it only had 16% uh, of all buyers uh, buying uh, bronze. So clearly they were doing something right there. Right. And I think, you know, in terms of overall average income, Colorado probably should have been in that same general category. Um, you know, like you said, the 30% of people with incomes under 200% of the poverty level, which, you know, for a um, for a single individual, you're talking $23,000 a year, 30% of those people still picked bronze plans. You know, well, you some of them may have, picked, may have picked gold or platinum, but probably... Or gold or platinum, that's true, that is true, um, but did not pick silver plans. Um, and, you know, based on, based on their income, my guess is a lot of them did pick bronze plans, mm -hmm. and, you know, you can't explain it away based on... Colorado's higher than average income. There's definitely something to it with the fact that Connecticut is doing such a good job of steering people towards those silver plans. Um, you know, I don't think people necessarily even know that the cost sharing reductions are out there. And so, you know, if you have a good broker or you, you know, talk to a navigator or you call in and you get personal assistance, you, then you're going to find out about the cost sharing reduction plans. But if you're just scrolling through on your own, um, you know, I think that's an, a key area where the websites need to make sure they're sort of directing people towards, you know, what would be probably the best option. That's not necessarily to say that a, a silver plan is always the best choice for people who qualify for cost sharing reduction subsidies. You know, it's a it's a personal choice, and everyone who, um, you know, you always have the choice of a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum plan. Um, but it's, and also I think for the people on the higher end of the cost sharing reduction eligibility range, like a, for a single person, um, an income between about 23000 and about 29000 per year, you do still qualify for the cost sharing reductions, but it's not as dramatic as it is, you know, in terms of the added benefit. It's not as dramatic as it is for somebody, you know, making seventeen or $18,000 a year. Um, I think... The general a general rule of thumb would be you know up to about twenty three thousand dollars a year for a single person. Um, really look twice or three times at those silver plans before you choose to go elsewhere, um, because you know for most people in that range they are going to present the best value. Right. But that that is a good rule of thumb. The the cost sharing reduction, if you're over two hundred percent of the uh, of the poverty level, is is only a very modest bump above um, the costs of a silver plan without without the benefit. So there, the you know, people in that range might think about the trade off with bronze. Some bronze plans in some areas um, do have some uh, benefits that kick in before you hit the very high deductibles. They might have uh, decent co-pays for physician visits, or they might have low cost for generic drugs, um, regardless of whether you've gotten anywhere near the deductible. So then, and of course, all plans in the ACA exchanges have um, have free preventive services like birth control and screenings for things like cholesterol, colonoscopy. Uh, so everybody should get some benefit out of out of any plan in the exchange, uh, but. Uh, for a lot of low-income people, there'd be very minimal benefit unless something catastrophic happens to having a bronze plan. Right, exactly. And and if something catastrophic does happen, you know, you need to keep in mind that with those, if you if you had select if you select a cost-sharing reduction plan, your worst-case scenario is better on those plans than it would be with a bronze plan. Right. You know, your maximum out-of-pocket. Not only are they paying more for just your regular day-to-day -day medical expenses, but your maximum out-of-pocket on those cost-sharing reduction plans is lower 
than it would be on a on a bronze plan. So right. Most I think the takeaway too. point um, for people is just to don't just scroll through and look at the lowest premium and take that plan. I mean, you really need to if you know get seek out help if you need it. There's in-person help available in your communities, on the phone, online. You can definitely find somebody who can help you. Um, and if you do want to do it, and, and it's you never pay anything for any of that help. A navigator, a broker, online, over the phone, you it's all free, the assistance to enroll. But if you do want to do it on your own, um, make sure you're taking enough time to really crunch some numbers and look at the details of the plans. Um, you don't want to just pick a plan based on its price. Well, that seems a, a good takeaway and probably a good good place to stop. So uh, it's been great talking to, to you, Louise, and uh, let's do it again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, Andrew. Great talking with you, too. Take care.